Hello everybody, welcome back. Now over the last few weeks we have been embarking on our Hawker Winter series journey and I was a little bit inspired by that. I decided I wanted to take it to the next level and essentially just tackle every little nook and cranny and corner of my life and see how I can improve upon the daily routines that I don't have and that I'm not consistently doing. So we've dealt with the health and wellness, we've dealt with the skincare, and now I want to talk about dealing with the hair and developing a healthy winter hair routine that I can stick to and be consistent with and inspire some regrowth and some health in these little locks. I wanted to do a deep dive. I gathered all my research. I went into every corner of the internet and found the top hair tips from the top experts, got some tips from the dermatologist, and I also spoke to my own hair people, aka at Hair by Armine. I even went to chat GPT and asked AI, hey, what are the top hair tips for maintaining and growing healthy, luscious locks? And lo and behold, shocker, surprise, surprise, spoiler alert, most of the top tips, uh, did not include little gummies that you could eat to have instant overnight Rapunzel unicorn hair, nor were there any instant quick fixes. And I feel like anyone who's telling you that is most of the tips that I found were maintain a healthy diet, eat leafy greens and nuts, and maintain an exercise routine to promote circulation in the body. And I was like, well, perfect. Technically, we're already doing that with Hawker Winter. So what are some other things that we can do to assist and help the luscious locks? Stay beautiful and luscious over the winter. So my friends, let us dive into what I've lovingly called this video, the ultimate hair guide for healthy hair this winter. So the top hair tips were maintain a healthy diet, and that included ingredients like zinc, protein, omega, etc. Eating lots of nuts, fish, and leafy greens, which sounded a lot like the Blue Zone diet to me, which I was excited about because we just watched that documentary. I just talked about that, did a little grocery haul inspired by that. I'm like, approved! I like the Blue Zone diet. We will definitely implement more of that. I've been eating a lot more like Brazil nuts and walnuts and stuff. I guess I could toss some more spinach in there. You know, just being mindful of what you're putting in your body because as we've learned, what you're putting in your body is what you're gonna see on the outside. You want healthy hair? Let's eat some healthy food. <laughs> the regular exercise, nice, awesome. And the next tip I actually came across in an article and it said, know thy hair. And I thought that was a very cute way of putting it. And that was basically to instill the idea that you need to know your hair type in order to know how to treat your hair. So knowing which products to buy, knowing how frequently or infrequently you should be washing your hair, just to know your hair type. For me, I've got very, very dry, very damaged hair. And so I use my products accordingly that suit that hair hair type. So knowing your hair type is very helpful. And that actually played into the next tip, which I thought was very interesting. And a lot of these tips kind of had conflicting answers. <laughs> there were so many articles I'd seen that say, don't wash your hair so often. It's stripping it. It's drying it out, blah, blah. And then there were so many articles on the other side saying, oh no, we're all about scalp health. You got to wash your hair every single day. Lots of conflicting opinions. It's kind of hard to tell. That's where you just have to use your better judgment. Know thy hair and know what's best for you. So in general, what I gathered from, you know, the whisperings and the teachings of the people is that if you have more oily hair, you can wash your hair more frequently. If you have more dry hair, you can wash your hair less frequently. That's kind of up to you to decide for your hair type and your head, which has just been a kicker, honestly, because as a millennial gal, <laughs> we all grew up being told that we should wash our hair once a week. And that was like the epitome of golden, healthy hair. Let your hair soak in its natural oils and juices. And now they're saying that scalp health has been suffering and we need to scrub the scalp and keep that fresh and clean and be washing your hair more frequently. So it's kind of hard to tell. Do you guys remember the whole period where we all believed in like cleansing conditioners? Like there was a hot time. I forget what the brand was. Do you guys remember the cleansing conditioners? We were trying to not over scrub and over strip and over shampoo. And now we're being told the opposite. So really who knows? Everybody will tell you different. It's just like skin. It's just like makeup. Everyone has a different experience. So trial and error is also key here. I don't want to give me the answer. Give me the answer. I don't want to test it out. <laughs> now that being said, when it does come to shampooing and washing your hair, the next big tip that I've seen a lot of and speaking of this like movement when it comes to scalp health, scalp health. <laughs> I always say scalp health uh, is to focus your shampoo on the scalp, but to also focus on doing a little scalp massage, scrubbing. You can use things like a little scalp brush to help with that. But that's something that I have definitely not implemented into my own hair routine. And I want to focus more on. I've tried a few like dandruff specific products, but considering that I 
am a person who does suffer with a dry scalp and dandruff, I feel like I would definitely benefit from using something like a scalp brush just to help promote the turnover on the scalp, exfoliate, give it some movement, give it some life. So this is something that has come highly recommended and something that I'm gonna be trying to implement into my hair washing routine. And another thing that I saw a lot of was talking about where you should put the products. And this is another thing that we've grown up listening to. It's like, put shampoo on the roots, put your conditioner on the ends. And now we're kind of being told a mix of the importance of conditioning your scalp and making sure that you're hydrating all over. So I think if you are maintaining the scalp, giving it regular scrubs, keeping it healthy, I think you're fine with putting conditioner everywhere. And then your overall scalp and hair will be healthier for it, right? Yeah. So the next tip I was kind of having a giggle about because it said invest in bond fortifying treatments. And that was it. There was no further explanation. I'm like, care to share with the class? Can you explain what this is and what those products would be? Uh, I thought that was just really funny. I saw this one tidbit. And so I was Googling bond fortifying treatments, what they mean, what the best products are. I found a couple great articles that listed their top recommendations. I'm gonna link those below because it was helpful. One of them, you guys know, there's been such a craze, such a love for the K18 leave-in molecular repair hair mask. This is something that I have used and loved in my hair. This is one of the top bond fortifying recommended products products that are out there on the market, which I think is perfect. Love, stamp of approval, we'll definitely continue to use this because I have been bad with it. Um, and then I actually also got a new one from Joico. This is the K-Bond 20 Defy Damage Power Mask. And I'm like, huh, both of them just have different processes. This is just like a classic mask. This is a put in your hair for two to five minutes and rinse out and continue as normal. The K-18 is a little bit more specific and you also don't rinse it out. So it's kind of just your preference in using them. But allegedly, bond fortifying treatments are the way forward and we need to have one in our hair care routine, so. Noted. The next top tip is to take said conditioner or bond fortifying treatment and or hair mask and let it soak. Let it sit in your hair for two minutes. And this is something that I don't necessarily enjoy. Every time I see a mask that's like leave on for 10 to 15 minutes and then rinse out. I'm obviously not gonna be using those in my daily shower. When I'm doing my daily shower, I'm in there for like a minute or two tops. I'm doing a quick scrub of the body and I hop out. I don't wanna sit there in the shower. I'm not gonna sit there for 10 to 15 minutes and soak in a mask. So those more time consuming masks are usually reserved for me on my pamper nights or if we like to do the masking method while we're working out one thing I love to do on a hair wash day is I put my hair mask into my hair before I go to my workout I'll do this little slick bun let it soak in the mask and by the time I get home it's been soaking for the entire hour of my workout and I'm ready to wash my hair so just trying to fit those extra masking moments into your daily routine can just help with the overall scheduling of it and just allows us to keep up with the little pampering self-care routines a little bit more frequently and not like every month where you're like oh my god I haven't put a mask on in a month what happened and you're like, ah, oh, crap. We can sprinkle these little self-care masking pampering moments throughout our everyday life. So I think that's something to keep in mind and something that I need to be better about with hair masks because usually I'm pretty good about it. I do love me a good masking moment, but I can definitely be forgetful about it and I definitely neglect my hair more often than not. So let the masks and let the conditioner soak in and use masks when you can. We're all about keeping those dry ends hydrated this winter. The next tip is to rinse your hair with cold water. And this is something that I am not on board for in doing when it comes to my daily showers. I just, if I'm washing and conditioning my hair and I'm standing in the shower and I'm naked and it is midwinter and I am just freezing every day, I'm not down for the cold shower life. I will cold plunge, but I cannot shower my entire body. So if I'm gonna rinse my hair out with cold water, it's gonna be like this. I ain't putting my body under there, okay? Maybe someday, maybe someday I will grow and become a pure cold water Nordic gal. But in the meantime, it's just gonna be a you know, a rinse for me, but I'm excited. I'm actually excited to try that one because I do feel like it makes a difference. This is something that Armin tells me all the time. You should be rinsing your hair in cold water. The less heat, the better. And everyone tells you that for your body too. If you have sensitive skin, you shouldn't be showering in boiling hot water, which I love to do. And I'm sure that doesn't help in the dryness of my skin. And I'm sure that's not helping with the dryness of my scalp and hair as well. So ah, I winter on that and it's just a mix of dry peeling tragedy. Uh, yeah, so rinse your hair with cold water. Apparently it's great for you. The next tip says to not wrap your hair in a towel. And this was a shocking revelation for me because I have forever done the little head flip, wrap your hair in a towel, flip it back up. And yes, it does yank. <laughs> when you think about it, really you are yanking your hair out of your scalp and twisting it and contorting it in such a way that I'm sure it's not helping with the breakage of the hair on your head. And I never thought about it. It was just something we always did. It's always very cute. You're in your robe, you're in your little twisted towel and you're like, oh, I am fabulous and doing my self care and this is amazing. And apparently that's, you know, very bad for your hair. So we're gonna be 
squeezing it to dry, being very gentle. We're not gonna be yanking it to and fro and doing a lovely little pat to dry. There's a fun fact for you. Now you know. Now I have to read this next tip because I can't for the life of me remember this word, but it is all about the to air dry or not to air dry. Again, another thing that we've been told our whole lives is that air drying is the best way. No heat is the best policy. Air dry your hair, let it do its own thing, get the natural texture, whatever. Any heat is bad heat, right? Now, allegedly, there's been new studies that show that air drying your hair is also bad for your hair. <laughs> <coughs> Drying with heat can cause damage to the outer layer of the hair, while air drying can cause damage to the inner layer, weakening the hair over time. Allegedly, this is called high roll fatigue. This is Google, not me. But apparently, the study that found that air drying was weakening your hair over time did not factor in conditioner for hair protection. So who knows what is right? Take everything with a grain of salt. I think at that point, you just have to do trial and error. For my hair personally, it feels amazing when I air dry my hair, but the question remains to air dry or not to air dry. Allegedly, the safest drying practice for your hair is to use the lowest heat setting and at least six inches away from your head. So take with that what you will, conflicting opinions on all sides regarding air drying or not air drying. <laughs> the other tips that we can apply to our daily, weekly, or monthly hair routines, just like the masking, is to consider some treatments. And that's something that I really have not done in my life. I've never gone for like a scalp massage, but I always see it and I see people getting them. I'm like, ooh, that's fun. Recently tried out the new treatment that Armine has at Beau Salon. To be fair, they haven't actually hard launched the treatment itself and actually given it an official name. So the little Mr. Contraption, the sauna for your hair and scalp, it was a magical experience. My hair was amazing after, it felt so good, it felt so moisturized and sleek and lovely. And so just like some people get facials, just like we get massages for our muscles, we can also consider adding in a trickle of hair treatments here and there to take care of the hair. You know, every time you get your hair done, they do a little scalp massage and you're like, what is this magical feeling? That's not something I can give to myself in, in the same way, but I do try to make a point of giving myself a little scrub while I wash my hair. Now we'll have the little scalp brush to help with that. So I think all of it will kind of go together, but we can consider looking into more hair treatments. I will happily be a guinea pig for that if there's any that you recommend. And then some other top daily hair tips include heatless hairstyles, obviously wearing clips, doing braids, anything that just doesn't involve heat styling, curling irons, straighteners, any of those things that just strip away and melt the hair, you know, obviously that's ideal. Low ponies, now this is something that Armin used to yell at me all the time because when I work out, <laughs> I used to just put my hair right on the top of my head. Because even when I do this little slick bun, if I'm doing an upper body day and I'm leaning against the bench, I'm literally like this. When I'm driving, I'm sitting like this. I can't actually lean my head back. That's why I always put the bun on the top of my head. But obviously, it's like causing a dent right at the top of my head and ripping my hair out. It's not great. I know that. If you can do a low pony or a low bun, it just takes less pressure off your hair, less breakage on your hair. I understand. What I like to do is actually wear a headband when I'm working out. So if I'm playing tennis, I just wear a little headband to slick it all back and that's nice. And then I can wear my pony or my bun a little bit lower on my head and it's not getting in the way. So that's something that I've done to help. I also use silk scrunchies to just be a little bit lighter and less tight on my hair. It doesn't need to be silk. Just any that's kind of like bigger and softer, less tight, less grippy, not gonna rip out your strands, that can be very helpful as well. But we all know that I do love a good slick tight bun. <laughs> And then finally, lots of tips on what to do with your hair when you're sleeping. And you know, a lot of people would suggest that you use a silk pillowcase, which I've seen time and time again. I personally, like, I don't know what it is, but I find it very slimy for me. I don't know, I <laughs> I have yet to get on board with the silk pillowcase, even though I know that the people say it's good for you. It's a little bit tough, it's a texture thing. I like to just sink in and stay. I don't like to be slipping and sliming all around. I don't know, I'm not quite on board with the silk pillowcase life yet, but I support those who do. One thing I did try was a little silk sleeping cap, and I don't know if I'm using it wrong, if there's something specific that needs to happen here, but it falls off every single night, every time that I try to wear this. By the time I wake up in the morning, it has completely slipped off my head. I've got a really big head and it's very tight. It was really, really tight around my ears. It kind of hurt. So obviously this one in particular is a little bit too tight for me, but also it just slips off. It's slimy silk, it just went whoop. Bye. I don't know if there's any tips on things that you can do to make this stay on overnight. If you guys have any favorite kind of sleeping caps, silk caps, what have you, but I am definitely on board for this, especially if you wanna wear a mask in your hair overnight and you don't wanna get it all over your pillowcases, that's a very nice option. And I can, I can get on board with this if I can find one that works for me and actually stays on my head. So what are your thoughts? 
on the sleeping caps. Let me know. And with that, my friends, those are all of the top tips that I found across the internet and from AI <laughs> in the hopes of growing and promoting healthy, luscious locks over this winter season. So I'm so excited to take some of these tips and implement them into my daily washing routine. Daily or, you know, weekly washing routine. However many days a week that happens, it doesn't matter. It's gonna be different for everyone, but I'm excited to see how it goes. I'm excited to see what kind of regrowth we get. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you guys have any top healthy hair tips, any products that you love to use, please let us know in the comments down below. Let us all enter this healthy hair era together and put the dry, sad winter hair to rest. And obviously based on some of our tips that we have here today, we're gonna be doing today's Landmas giveaway. So we've got this big giant box. This is the ultimate healthy hair guide themed box. Hair routine, healthy hair routine. What am I saying? Ultimate healthy hair routine box. That is today's themed Landmas giveaway. And let me show you all the goods that are inside. Fable and Maine had the cutest one of a little recipe card with their hair oil, so cute. And their Holly Roots shampoo and conditioner, beautiful set, also their hair mask. We've also got a set from JVN, which Dan is very sad about because the complete blow styling. Well, I can't I read right now? The Complete Blowout Styling Milk, one of his favorite products. Also the Nourishing Shine Drops, stunning. That's a beautiful set from JVN. Also included the K18, naturally, because it's one of our favorite products that we've tested here. Then Kerastas actually sent this along. Thank you so much to the Kerastas team because these are two gorgeous products. This is the Elixir Ultime Oil, and then this is the Nutritive 8-Hour Magic Night Serum, which they got me on this last year, and I can't wait for you guys to try the night serum is amazing whoever wins this you're gonna love this you're gonna be hooked i know it then i got some random things okay this is actually important to note because i don't know if you guys saw the brush that i've been using i've gone through a few of them but i always buy the same ones the wet brush is my favorite brush and they have their regular one that just has the pokey things but they have a version of the brush <laughs> Like, I don't know what this packaging is. I bought it on Amazon, sorry. But they have like the tall pokies, but then there's like the little forest of bristles within it. And that is my favorite brush. So I picked one up because this is the one I use. They have a million different colors. You, whoever wins this gets a pink one. Um, and then I got the little boar bristle brush because that, you know, we got to keep our chic slick updos for the winter. I'd love to include aerosols like my hairspray, but I can't send aerosol in the mail. Otherwise, you know that I would have included my living proof hairspray. So I'm so sorry about that, but I cannot. Then we've also got a little scalp brush so we can scrub the bahookie out of our scalps. Um, this is also a cute, this is the JVN wide tooth comb. They included that with their set, which is very sweet. Thank you, JVN. Oh, then this is also, this is also my random thing, but speaking of the headbands these are the headbands that i buy off of amazon and these are what i wear when i work out and around so i included a few of those too we've also got the slip silk hair scrunchies i also just bought myself a fresh new pack in the sephora sale and had to get one for you guys because these are beautiful and then just because i didn't enjoy my experience with the silk cap i got you guys this kitsch beauty satin bonnet which looks promising so i might have to give this one a go as well but put this in there then obviously my two favorite tools the t3 curl trio this is the curling iron that i have used four years it's the only curling iron i use i love it so much i'm really into the big barrel these days but you have the different options if you so wish to use it and it is beautiful and i can't wait for one of you to have this in your hands as well and then listen i just like i'm trying so hard to make the air wrap work for me but how many years is it going to take for me to just accept the fact that i am not an air wrap girly i i am not but i am however a supersonic girly so we picked up the beautiful i don't know if this was a limited version but i really like the color very very pretty uh we bought a dyson supersonic for one of you to have because this is the best hair dryer dan and i travel with it we're obsessed with it it is so good they've also updated all the attachments apparently this is like a scalp health attachment so you can use this to blow dry your scalp and allegedly it's a fabulous thing. It also has the new flyaway attachment, which I haven't even tried yet. <laughs> I feel like I could really benefit from using this in my life, but can't wait for one of you to get your hands on this. Now a little caveat to this moment, obviously the two biggest pieces in this giveaway have North American plugs. So if you find yourself still wanting to enter and you do not live in North America or you live in the UK or in Europe where you have different plugs, please still feel free to enter. I don't know about the shipping for T3, but I do know that we'd be able to ship you 
the appropriate Dyson product. So just in case the person who enters to win, you're still eligible to win, but we'll just have to sort out shipping you um, a Dyson with your plug because you can't use converters for this. So just keep that in mind. We're obviously more than willing to ship that out to you, but just know we did for the purposes of the giveaway and just in case purchase the big one, but we will happily sort it out if you win and you're not in North America. So don't you fret. Um, yeah, all of that is going in the box. That is today's giveaway. So please check in the comments, comments, please check in the description box down below to see how you can enter to win the hair faves bundle, the ultimate healthy hair pack uh, for winter. <laughs> this box of goodies. I hope you guys love today's giveaway. I hope you enjoyed this video and seeing all the tips. Thank you so much for being here and for watching. I love you all so much and I'll see you all tomorrow for a new Landmas video. Bye.